Good morning. I am attempting to do a broadcast this morning. But I live in the boonies. And so the Wi-Fi doesn't always cooperate with me. I'm trying to see if it's cooperating. I am on my business page, facebook.com slash build with Tanya and my personal page as well. For those of you who are on my personal page, hello, YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to get uh, uploaded videos of me teaching and training and sharing weekly. You can see in the title, how to manifest goals that matter. And also a little faith in the industry. So I'm going to kind of mix the two, although I talk about kingdom stuff all the time. First, let me know if you guys can see me, because if not, I'll close this down and just broadcast from my business page. Let me know in the comments if it's clear for you all. So I had a birthday yesterday as well. Thank you so many people. And I, at one time, I wanted to attempt to um, just thank everyone individually, but I posted on my business page and my uh, Facebook, my personal page, and there was just no way that I could, I mean, I just didn't have it in me. So I am taking this time to thank all of you who wished me well on my birthday. I had a quiet birthday. It was awesome. My daughter prepared my favorite, favorite um, meal. Hey, Jenny, can you hear me, dear? Is it clear for you? Um, for me, so she's an excellent cook. And she prepared um, homemade shrimp fried rice. That was amazing. Um, and I just spent time at home with her. It's just kind of like the early part of the week for me and getting her back and forth to school. So I didn't have like a super um, busy birthday, but it was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. It was absolutely um, everything that I needed on, on yesterday. Uh, if you guys can hear me, hey, Sojo, can you hear me? You guys know the my internet if I'm using Wi-Fi and I'm trying to do a broadcast to allow not only my business page, but everyone else. Good afternoon, dear. Can you hear me? Is it clear or should I just, you can? Oh, okay. Well, we'll push forward. You guys, as you're on, do me a favor. Uh, share the broadcast out with someone else you feel could use this message, how to manifest goals that matter. And also, um, as we talk and converse, um, we're going to have a conversation. So I want you guys to interact with me. And then also press the like button if I say something that helps your business or your life. So first of all, um, I have a group on Facebook called Faith in the Industry. And it's a very small group. It's just a group of determined women entrepreneurs who not only want to grow in you know areas of their business, but this is a focus on their spirituality. And probably about, actually yesterday would have been a month ago that I shared with them that I decided to read the Bible from the beginning to the end. Now, I've probably read the Bible several times, but just so sporadically and you know, a chapter here, a verse there. And I just made a decision. I woke up and I said, I'm gonna read the Bible like from the very beginning to the end. And so about six days in, I decided to invite my um, the members of the Facebook group to do it with me as like a challenge. And so several of them took, us, took me up on that. I kind of waited for them and they caught up and we're reading two chapters of the Bible per day. And recently we were just scheduled to finish Genesis chapter one. And there were some things that, you know, really stood out for me that I wanted to share with you all today. I believe when I read the Bible, I see business for whatever reason, but I believe they are some, some principles and some concepts that really, really stood out that will help you in your pursuit, in your business and in your life. And so for me, one of the huge characters in uh, Genesis that stood out was Joseph. And there were some things about Joseph that I think if we keep those same things in mind for our own life and our own business, um, we're usually in alignment with what it is that 
you know, God wants us to do, and even the things that we really desire in our hearts. And so I want to share a few of those things that I really noticed about Joseph. <clears throat> One, um, Joseph had a vision. So you know that was huge for me, guys, because I believe in vision. I believe fully when the scripture says um, those without vision perish, it's because you don't have like an idea of where it is that you desire to go. And so the likelihood of you just going anywhere, doing anything with anyone is much greater when you don't have a clear vision. So I love the fact that Joseph, well, in, in Genesis, it was a dream. And sometimes dreams and visions um, intertwine. And so I'm going to look at it as if it was a vision, <laughs> you know, that he was given. But he was given a vision about his, his future life. And he shared the vision with his family. He believed in what he dreamed so much that, you know, he began to speak those things into the atmosphere. So you all know that I am all for affirmation. Like, you know, say it until you see it. And I don't mean just speaking and think it's going to appear like we got like this magic genie that we're rubbing. And if we say this, it's going to just happen. But I mean, oftentimes what we are actually speaking is what is transpiring in our lives. And we, when we want to see something different, no vision, you drift. I'm telling you guys. And you can even have a vision and drift if you don't stay connected or in alignment with things that coincide with the vision. I'm gonna say that again, even with a vision, you can drift. If you aren't intentional about staying connected with people and things that are in alignment with the vision. I share all the time if I you know, was teaching a group of teenage girls anything about moving forward in their life, it would be to figure out what their purpose is and what their vision is first, before they start thinking about who I'm gonna marry, long date, all of that other stuff, because the vision dictates so many things for us. It keeps us on a path that um, helps us to avoid some of the adversity that comes when we don't have a clear vision, right? So if I was speaking to, you know, a younger group of uh, teenage girls who are, you know, going on to college and just figuring out their life, it would be, and I tell my daughter this, figure out what it is that you really desire for your life. And as you're in pursuit of what that thing is, all the other stuff will be added. So you'll begin to attract people from the space, right, of which is going to take you towards your vision, which is exactly what happened with Joseph. Now, some of the things that he attracted seemed unfortunate at the time, right? So Joseph had this vision or dream, and he began, he affirmed it. He shared it twice. Now, maybe what Joseph may have done wrong but then none of it was wrong because it worked out so perfect, was he shared it with, with the wrong people. And so not everybody is going to be able to handle the vision that God has placed on the inside of you. you. You guys get that? And sometimes the people who are closest to you, who are verbally cheering you on, are not always the ones who can handle what God is doing in your life. Do you guys get that? So Joseph's brothers in you know Genesis, they couldn't handle it when he shared with them that he would be, you know, the head above them. And I don't feel he was sharing it in a way where he was being um, boastful or, or even bragging. He was just sharing, you know, the vision or the dream that he had. I don't think he took it from a space of authority. He was actually the youngest. I don't even think his mind was going that far in detail with, you know, being in authority over his brothers. But you know, sometimes even those who are family um, or that you consider friends, they're not always in a position emotionally, they're not always emotionally intelligent enough um, to handle what is transpiring in your life. Now, sometimes it's not even just emotional intelligence, but a person without vision is, is going to struggle to support you when yours seems so much greater. A person that you're sharing your vision with will often struggle to support you when your vision seems so much greater. So be mindful of who you share your vision with. The next thing that stood out um, for me was um, he didn't wait for validation. He, he didn't wait for validation. He didn't wait to be validated. He just accepted the vision and began to walk it out. And this third thing, this is huge. 
because what I find that many entrepreneurs struggle with is practice. Many entrepreneurs struggle with practicing. So Joseph, when no one was paying him any attention, he was practicing the very things that would be needed for the longer leg of his, of his journey and his destiny. Do you guys get that? So Joseph was out, you know, tending to the sheep, being obedient, um, following instructions, all those things. He took those same qualities and that same character with him that led him to some really great things later on as the vision began to progress. So that was one thing that stood out for me. It was huge. So guys, when nobody is looking, when you're not when you when you when you're not on the platform when you're not headlining when you're when you're not keynoting when you know maybe you're a coach when you aren't the person that everybody is um connecting with right that is the best time for you to practice it's the best time for you to practice and just what i found to be true guys because many people are so um, inundated with things that get to, uh, that make them feel good or happy or entertained, that oftentimes people will circle back around. Y'all don't hear me. Oftentimes, because you're practicing, <clears throat> because you're becoming the expert, because you're getting the information that you need for your next level, because you're applying it when no one, it seems as if no one is watching, there will come a time when they've run the course with all the uh, the hype and they'll come back for substance. Listen, guys, substance is what's going to last. And so when no one is watching, be sure that you continue to practice. That was one of the things that stood out for me with Joseph in the book of Genesis. He practiced when nobody was looking, right? When they didn't, when his brothers didn't consider him the greatest, um, when he wasn't getting all of the attention, Joseph was practicing. He was practicing. I say practice, um, preparation is powerful. Prepar preparation is powerful. When your opportunity comes, you will have practiced so much, right? That you're gonna create a lane for yourself. People will get tired of all the fluffy stuff and the stuff that's not working. And they're going to be looking for substance. And it's going to come through from you who are practicing when no one else is watching, right? When you're grinding and you're behind the scenes and, and nobody really knows your name or your platform, but you're perfecting your process along the way. That's what Joseph was doing. Uh, the next thing I noticed was Joseph's gift made room for him. His gifts made room for him. So we start out seeing that Joseph had the ability to have these dreams and, and visions. And because he continued to have them, he began to perfect that particular gift. So even when, you know, he was placed in prison, gosh, this is so huge, guys. His gift made room for him. His gift made room for him. When they needed to discern a vision or a dream, the, the king, and this is huge, called for someone to interpret a, a dream that he had, and Joseph was capable. He had been practicing that all along. It was his gift, and his gift made room for him. But this is what really stood out for me as well, because the king who was in this really, really high position, he never got too big-headed that he couldn't ask for help. And many of you are missing the help that's available for you because maybe you've been doing whatever it is you've been doing for so long and you're like, well, I shouldn't have to ask anyone for help. Or if I have to ask someone for help, is it going to look as if I don't know what I'm doing? The king didn't lose his, his position by seeking the help of someone who was considered on a lower level than him in the community, right? So I applaud the king for saying, hey, I'm the king, but I need, I need help in this particular area. He didn't hesitate. And not only did he not hesitate, but he recognized Joseph's greatness in his areas of weakness and put him over everything in the land of Egypt. For those of you who own businesses and you know, you're seeking out help and you're looking for people who are just like you, 
I always suggest that you figure out what it is you're not good at and delegate that thing to someone who does an exceptional job at doing that. Do you, you guys get that? So when I'm reading scripture now, <clears throat> God is sharing many, much of the revelation is coming out in an entrepreneurial standpoint. And, you know, I'm grateful for that because I, I'm a business coach and mentor. And so I'm able to use even the revelation and the understanding that I get from scripture to impart to those that I work with, right? So one of the things I noticed was that the king, although he was the king, he wasn't too proud. He wasn't ashamed of the fact that he didn't know how to do something. He found someone who was the best in that area to fulfill that particular assignment. And many of you are staying stuck in your life and in your business because you won't go get help. You want to do it all. Guys, it's, if you're going to leverage, scale, and grow your business, you're going to need some help. And when you're hiring, the best thing to do is not to necessarily find someone who is great at the same thing that you're great at, but who excels in their own lane in something that's that's not you know, your lane. It's not your thing. It's not the thing that you're good at. Guys, we can be good at several things, but it's hard to work with the spirit of excellence on a whole lot of stuff, right? So I noticed that even though we're talking about Joseph, that stood out for me um, with the king. And the last thing that really impressed me and that really stood out for me was Joseph's integrity, his integrity. So there was a, a time where I think it was Potiphar, his wife um, took a liking to Joseph. Now, you know, most people, if they're wise and they're bringing um, a lot of prosperity to an area, uh, people are normally attracted to wisdom. People are attracted to people who bring value, right? And so Potiphar's wife began to, you know, have a liking for Joseph. And she tried it with him, you know, several times. He turned her down. And then this last time, you know, she went to extremes to um, be dishonest about what happened and say that he had, you know, tried to get with her on another level or whatever. And he ends up going to prison. But throughout all of that, Joseph kept his integrity, right? See, one thing, he recognized the major thing that was before him, and he was able to judge, he was able to move past his flesh, because, you know, it didn't say whether or not, you know, he was kind of feeling her too. He chose wisdom in that moment. He chose wisdom in that moment as opposed to his flesh. He, it landed him in prison still, but then he became in charge in the prison. So many of you have gifts, right? That no matter where you go, those things are going to stand out because your gifts make room for you. And your job and your goal is to get in a space where those things can be cultivated so you can continue to go to the next level. So that's my take on um, Genesis and just a few points that I learned. For those of you who like to join us in the group, we just talk about spiritual stuff, you know, in the group. We're growing in our spiritual walk. It is women entrepreneurs who wanna grow spiritually, who own a business and right now, the challenge has been to read the Bible. We read two verses on our own. We don't read it out loud in the group. And then we come back and share, you know, any revelation or things that we got. And it's so amazing because I've been reading the word for years, but there has been so much fresh and new revelation that has come from me reading it this time. Um, one, because I'm different. I've grown. My understanding has grown. And so my eye for things is also different. But the ladies in the group are really growing in their spiritual walk and it's impacting how they live their life and, you know, how they do business. I do do some live broadcasts um, in the group, but we mostly share what was our takeaway, you know, from whatever it was that we read. And, and it's just been really wonderful for me. Um, hey, Ashley, how are you, dear? It's been awesome and amazing for me. For those of you who'd like to join us in that group, it's um, completely uh, a spiritual based group. It's called Faith in the Industry. You can Google it, not Google it. You can put it in the search box on Facebook and you can join us in there. We're talking about Bible stuff and kingdom business. That's what's going on in there. But I also wanted to share with you how to manifest goals that matter. When you begin to look back at the goals and things that you have for your life and your business, that list that you're making, how much of it is in alignment 
or really connected to where it is that you desire to go. And while you guys are thinking about that, I'm gonna read a few of the comments. Um, you can drift with the vision if you're out of alignment with your vision. So true, Sojo. Um, yes, preparation makes you ready so you don't have to get ready and you can be great and still need help, absolutely. Um, every time it's fresh and new, it helps you show up in your life and business. It really does. I've been so empowered um, inside the group, just up leveling my spiritual, you know, walk with God. Um, wow. I mean, I've been saved for years, but I just believe that the word has so much new and fresh revelation all the time. And I think the fact that we have so many people who are in alignment and wanting to do the same thing, um, they bring new and fresh re revelation. So I learned this, guys, and listen, I wish I maybe had written this down so that I could be assured that I'm telling it to you properly. But it says that every word has seven dimensions. And I'm going to go back and um, figure out the exacts on this. But I'm just going to share some numbers that I can kind of sort of remember just to give you an idea of how much revelatory things are in the word for your life. So they say every word has seven dimensions and in each one of those dimensions, there are 400 levels. So you can never feel like you've read the word already and you don't need it again, or there's nothing new or fresh. I read, and this was about 10 years ago, I began reading the book of Proverbs every single day and I did it for four to five years. And last night, my daughter, reminded me of, you know, we were reading, She she's reading something in the Word now, and I'm reading as well. Well, she's actually doing the Bible challenge, and she started after we did, and she said she wants to read it on her own. But last night, she reminded me of how we used to read Proverbs every day. So we read Proverbs, you know, 17 uh, yesterday, and she was like, my, it was so crazy when we were reading, because it was like every day, no matter what we were going through, what we were reading for that day always had something that, you know, lined up with it. And so the same thing goes for you guys, no matter how much you're reading it, if you're rereading it again, because guys, we are becoming every single day. We're becoming more. And so the way we view and see things changes based on, you know, how we've grown. And, and speaking of the word becoming, Genesis in Hebrew means becoming. Y'all know that was good to me, right? Because I talk about becoming all the time. So when I looked it up, um, it said um, it meant to start. Genesis meant source. It meant emergence. And it meant becoming. I stopped at becoming because that was good enough for me. Because my desire is to help you guys become the highest version of yourself in every area of your life. Specifically, six areas um, that I focus on and I teach on in my trainings, my affirmation guide. For those of you who have purchased and so joe i got some good news because um i'm almost finished um making the guide accessible for gift giving so anyway for those of you i had several people to ask how do i give that out as a gift and so that's almost complete where it'll be a simple click you put in um who you're sending it to your message and it will go directly to them. So that's my take as far as faith in the industry is concerned. But even that made me think about manifesting goals and dreams that matter. And so when you think about the goals that you've been writing down or the things that you say that you wanna do, and some of them you may very well have accomplished. But I wanna ask you this question, how many of them mattered and were in alignment with your vision? I think it's important that we're creating goals that actually matter and not just a goal just to say that I'm creating a goal, right? And this is why when we don't create goals that matter, and when I say matter, they may matter in season, in timing. So the, the reason why it's important that we create goals that matter is so that we don't have all of these things that are half done on our list that aren't impacting our right now and our future. Because you can get some stuff done and it has nothing to do with the moment that you're in 
who you are now or who you are desiring to become. And so it's important when I'm, you know, working with my clients. I have one client in particular that I just recently spoke with this morning. And, you know, one of the things that when we have our uh, next consultation that is important to me that I share with her is that she focus on the goals for now that are going to impact who she is now and who she is becoming. You know, when I talk to people who say they've invested so much money in building their business, whether it was classes, courses, resources, um, things inside their business, if they own a brick and mortar, when I hear that and they still are stuck timing always comes into play for me. I'm like, okay, are they setting the right goals in the right season? Are they setting goals that matter? Is that thing that you're setting out to do going to matter for who you are now and who you desire to become? And this is why vision is so, so important. And then I wanna talk about briefly about manifesting goals because I decided I normally don't, you know, um, Post like classes and courses during December unless I'm embracing something new. So I've decided to do a webinar and it's called How to Manifest Goals That Matter. No, How to Create Goals That Matter and Manifest. Because we can create a goal, but if they're not manifesting for us, we start to get this heaviness, right? We start to feel overwhelmed. We begin to feel burned out from all these different things that we're creating. And I talk about this and I, you know, I don't think, well, I know that sometimes it's misunderstood. But if you're uncertain about your own vision, the vision for your life that aligns with your values. So here's an example. It's not important to me to be in a new state or a new city every other week. That's not valuable to the full circle experience of my life in this season. Now it is part of my vision in a few years. But in this season, that doesn't allow me to focus on the full circle aspect of what I value in my life. Doesn't mean I don't do speaking engagements. It doesn't mean I don't go to conferences. But to have to run somewhere every other week, it's not for me, but it may very well be for you or the next person. Do you guys get that? But if you're not clear on what your vision is, you'll make attempts to do things that are completely out of alignment with your life and your business in this season. And a vision helps you to determine and dictate that. You know, one of the things that's super important, and I've given you guys this action step before, is to write down the five things that you value the most. And you can use that as a guide. It's going to help you within your vision. It's going to help you with your hiring. Many of you are hiring people who don't have the same values that you have. And so if you're bringing people on your team uh, who don't have the same values that you have, Eventually, over time, there is going to be some friction. Over time, there will be friction because the way that a person who values one thing does something as opposed to someone who values are completely different, they're not in alignment and there's normally friction. So I'm gonna do this um, webinar, It'll probably be about an hour long, on how to create goals that matter and then how to create goals that manifest. So we're, I'm gonna teach you uh, the different levels of goal setting, because many of you may be setting a goal for here when actually it needs to be here. Maybe where you're at is actually in a space where this is where your goals need to be in this stage of expansion, right? And if you're creating goals like from a seed uh, gro growth space, and I talk about the three levels of growth, seed, growth, and expansion, and if it's not expanding, it's normally declining. But how you're creating your, creating your goals in what season makes a difference as well. 
And so I want to teach you how to create goals that matter and manifest. Matter and manifest. I'm going to do that inside that web that uh, webinar. I don't even have like a landing page. I think I do have I do have a link. Um, it's on December the 30th. Uh, I think the 30th, 12:30 p.m. If that's a Monday, guys, that's the right date. And the link to that is bit.ly slash 2020mgm, bit.ly slash 2020mgm. That's creating goals that matter and manifest. It's a complimentary webinar. I feel like if I can help you foundationally learn how to create the right goals that are in alignment with what you desire, then you can spend 2020 knowing who to be connected to, what to be connected to, and what steps to do next. If I can help you learn to create goals that actually matter for where it is you desire to go and how to manifest them, then you can spend the time, you can do your own work figuring out, okay, what resources am I going to need? Um, who am I going to need to help me? What steps do I need to take? What book do I need to read? What do I need to focus on the most? Now that I've figured out how to create goals that really matter, and this, let me make that clear. So, so maybe you understand that you need networking um, or uh, a new circle of, of influence. And so every vending opportunity that comes about, you take it. But if it's not in alignment with where you desire to go, you will still feel the same way when it's, you may feel worse because you've extended your time and your energy and your efforts so I want to teach you how to create goals that not only matter, but goals that manifest, right? Um, if you're going to put on a show, so maybe you're a personal stylist um, or maybe you're in the beauty industry and you're putting on a show and maybe the show gets attention, but in 2020, you really needed to focus on your profits and you know that the show is not really a profitable show, but you do it again, you feel compelled to have to do it again because you did it last year or you did it before. And it's not to say to do it again, but maybe your goals within the event that you're, attend you're planning on hosting should be to look at how you can profit differently instead of just having it again. Do you guys get that? Because listen, affirmation looks good. It looks good to have tons of people connecting, but your results is what matters at the end of the day as an entrepreneur and in your life, the time you take away from your family to do those things. So we're gonna, I'm going to help you um, create goals that matter and also goals that manifest. You can go to bit.ly slash 2020MGM. It's completely complimentary. I believe it's December the 30th. The details should be on the page. There is no... A landing page. So it's just going to collect your email. You're not going to get an email back on today, but I'll take your all of the emails that come in and the people who are attending and I'll add you to an automated list and then you'll get details like the login information. You'll be able to get reminders because I know you guys um, probably get tons of emails, but this will give you a reminder as you get closer to that date. And it's perfect timing. So it's a few days before you go into 2020 to help you gain new levels of clarity. Um, listen, remember I said with Joseph, one, he had a vision. He affirmed it. He didn't wait for anybody to validate it, which is what a lot of people are doing, right? If they put something out one time and it doesn't get enough validation, they don't do it again. But the validation comes from the fact that you understand that that vision is for you and your life and your business. That's where the validation begins from. And then you put into practice, which is what Joseph did. He did the same things over and over and over again. And then he became great and his gifts began to make room for him. So sometimes we're gifted in areas that we don't cultivate. Y'all don't hear me. So get a vision one. Um, affirm it yourself. Speak over your vision. Um, affirming it also can be uh, connecting with someone who's already done whatever it is you desire to do who has answers, who can help you to affirm the steps you need to take to make it happen. Um, don't wait for validation, not from the masses before you start. Um, practice, even when no one is looking. 
practice even when no one is looking. So when you are before an, a, a huge crowd or you, you gain a large platform, you're ready. And they're like, where did this amazing person come from? Right? Not knowing that you've been practicing behind the scenes all day long. So I say, you know, oftentimes we're wanting God to do different things in our life, but if that opportunity was to present itself to you today, would you be prepared? So all of this stuff that we're praying that God does in our life and, you know, how we're believing greater for things, are we prepared? If the opportunity even came today, would we be prepared? Could we handle it? So um, be sure to practice when no one is watching. When it seems like, you know, no one's including you in the click. And next, your gift is going to make room for you. And the next thing he did, he operated in integrity. So what he knew was right to do, he did it regardless. Mm -hmm. Regardless of how big that next opportunity looked, if it was out of alignment with integrity, Joseph didn't do it. And it set him before kings. Join us for the webinar December the 30th, How to Make Goals That Matter and Manifest, bit.ly slash 2020MGM. I'm going to be teaching you how to create goals that are in alignment with what it is that you desire and then how to see them manifest. You want the goals to manifest, right? You guys have a super amazing day. I appreciate all of you who watched and shared. I will, today's Wednesday, I will be back on next Monday. Thank you for all of the birthday wishes. I appreciate you guys so much. I had a very quiet um, birthday on a Tuesday which was absolutely um, the way that I desired it. I turned down some things, maybe on the weekend, right? But um, getting my baby ready for school and things of that nature, I just wanted to relax. And it's cold and I'm an introvert and all that good stuff. I'm grateful, so grateful to, um, to be here, right? To be able to serve and um, grow in my own vision and, you know, have an opportunity to become more. I was talking with my mom this morning and we were talking about, you know, even when we get certain amounts of money or we hit certain goals that we desire, you come to a place where you realize, now don't take this wrong because I just think we should be getting the coin, okay? I believe that God wants us extremely wealthy. But if you really think about it, the things that really, really bring us joy, um, they happen or they're possible even if you if it wasn't connected to, and I have a hard time saying that because I just believe that um, money is really important factor in our life, but I was just letting you know that before the money comes, practice being joyful. Practice being happy before it ever gets here because money is only going to magnify who you already are. It's going to magnify whatever it is you have going on. That's what money, that's all that money is going to do. So if you're unhappy or you're pissed off or it's going to magnify, <laughs> you know, the more money you get, you're going to be more pissed off. So get in the habit of practicing joy and peace and, you know, finding gratitude in the space that you're in as you're growing because that's what really matters. And for me, you know, family, um, making sure we're well taken care of. Those are the things that are really important to me. And spending that time with my family is valuable. And maybe because, you know, for so many years early in my career, I spent so much of my holidays and, and my time um, making people look beautiful, right? And I would be, you know, not feeling my best at our family events because I'm super tired. Um, because I've done extra favors, I work later than normal, and time freedom is just invaluable to me, time freedom and financial freedom. But find a space of joy on your way to whatever your goal is, because whatever your money goal is, because whatever amount of money you have, it's going to magnify whatever the situation is. It'll magnify your character and whatever the situation is that's going on with you now. You guys have a super amazing day.